Okay. So there's nobody else coming. You got that? The door. Is that now? Okay. All right, 7 o'clock, uh, January 23rd. Welcome to the second meeting of the Board of Trustees. Um, I'm Chris Mutcher, Chairman of the Board. I'm joined by Vice Chair um, Crockett and Trustee Hollister and Road Administrator Kopauer. We'll get started. We have no minutes uh, to approve for January 7th until the next meeting, so we'll move along to uh, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills of $44,550.87, broken down general fund $3,633.19, fire fund $24,653.04, uh, cemetery fund zero, uh, EMS billing $7,008.69, road bridge uh, $9,255.95, uh, capital fund new firehouse, um, Zero. Is there a motion? So move. I'll second that. Uh, Mr. Hollister moves. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts? Hearing none, may we vote please? Uh, I guess I'll call the vote. Mr. Hollister? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, course, but who was taking notes? Well, our electronic oh, notes trigger. That's true. Um, we have a video. We'll be taking the notes. Eight minutes from that. Mm -hmm. Okay, correspondence for the evening. Let's see what we got. Um, letter from Bricker and Eckler, uh, the Otarma um, policy renewal for our property insurance uh, for 2019. It's not. It's not due until uh, uh, February 10th which is after our next meeting. And I think we need to hold off uh, until our next meeting because Colin was, uh, and he's not here obviously, uh, Colin was working with an Otarma, working with an Otarma representative about uh, uh, revaluing some of the fire equipment and, uh, and then potentially um, paying more to uh, insure, it, insure it at another value. And I'm not sure if they decide on a value. I mean, some of that information is in here, but I'm not sure it's the information that they that they agreed to that, that that's what they really wanted to have in the policy. And it will increase if they go at that direction. It will increase the policy by about three thousand dollars a year. So, and not an insubstantial, unsubstantial amount of money. So, let's wait till the next meeting where we can get those numbers exactly. I also noticed that in the schedule of covered vehicles, which we constantly have a problem with, and I don't know why, but we do, uh, we are still insuring um, the dump truck that we sold six months ago. Mm -hmm. and, she pulled, did it. and we're not insuring uh, the uh, 2016 Ford F450. 2012? No, the new one. It's the 12, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're not sure that either. Really? Yeah. I thought you were wrong. Wait a minute. Or is that the one we are insuring? Oh, yeah, we are insuring that one. We've got a 04 and a 2012. Okay. All right, well, let's take that back because they're calling the 04 when a dump truck and they're calling the 12 a super duty truck. No, they're both the same. They're both the same. All right, then we're good. But the van is not on there, is it? No, van isn't. All right, so we'll wait till <coughs> next meeting to uh, finalize that. Uh, we have a letter from the village of Clifton. They are getting very formal. And uh, they are including a, a, a contract between us and them for snow removal and street sign and repair, which used to be about half a page long to call Dan and it's going to cost you 50 bucks. <laughs> now it's two pages long and it's got a, a village solicitor and village treasurer and the village mayor and it's got room for uh, all, of us. all of us and not, uh, interestingly enough, not village council people. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> I will now entertain a motion to approve the contract between the village of Clifton and Miami Township. Basically it's the exact same thing that we've done all along. Um, uh, 
with $50 an hour for snow removal and repair, I guess. Is it 50? As we charge for salt and the use of the truck, is it 50 or 65? Is it $63 or 50? Street repair at 50. And snow, five, snow removal at 50 an hour. Does oh, not, yeah. But that does not include the fee for material costs. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So, I would make that motion. Okay, Mr. Crockett moves. I will second. And Mr. Hollister will second. Any further discussion regarding that? Uh, entering into that contract? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I will vote yes. Um, as you say, it has a little bit of work. <laughs> a little bit of signatures. So, well, a little bit of signature. Um, we now have a, a letter from uh, Eric Sears, the county recorder. It's his yearly um, reminder that we need to file any additions to our zoning code and zoning resolution with the uh, uh, with the county recorder. Um, I don't see one, but perhaps you and Margaret, since you're doing the yeah the code changes can get that all fixed up. Put this aside. We have a uh, packet from the Regional Planning Coordinating Commission about the meeting from last night. We'll go over that later on. We'll have registration for the 20th Annual Local Government uh, uh, Officials Conference in uh, March 7th and 8th. Uh, mm -hmm. We have an email from uh, Lisa Krieger regarding the uh, entertain, uh, entertainment, the Economic Sustainability Commission retreat that is coming up on <coughs> sometime that Mark knows about. <laughs> so Mark, you take the, you check that out. Um, we have some information about a DIC, DCIC organi organizational meeting coming up on the 29th and the information that you have that came with that. Um, we have a letter from a, a couple on Fairfield, uh, Yale Springs Fairfield Road, um, excuse me, a couple on Lamont Drive uh, to a resident of Yale Springs Fairfield Road with serious concerns about trees that are falling from his property onto these people's property and I give him the um, patience of the decade award for letting that go that long. And unfortunately, it doesn't. Uh, he's sending it us to sending it a copy to us, uh, as he says, to um, uh, inquire into any local ordinances. We we don't have any local ordinances that would control that. Uh, it's not affecting the roads or a fence line. I mean, we could do it as a fence line thing, but yeah. uh, interesting um, email from. Central State about, uh, I say the date for a 1890 land grant, grant stakeholder luncheon um, in Columbus. Um, for your information, our April Township Association meeting is going to be held at Central State, and I believe there will be a presentation uh, <clears throat> about this. There may be a mini presentation about the, the land grant work. A newsletter from uh, Howe Township Association, a uh, notice from uh, Deputy Engineer Trudy, the uh, engineer's office about the collective bid uh, deadline of February 15th and 19. Uh, we'll need to set up a uh, road tour. Um, I don't think we'll do it after, um, we'll set it up after the meeting, uh, our next first meeting in February might have a better idea of the, the, the weather before then. So um, we'll also give Dan a, a, an opportunity to uh, collect his thoughts about roads. And as you recall, um, we talked about this last year, and we can talk about it further, but we didn't get our fogging done. That never was done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that needs, will still need to be done. We'll, they'll do it, they'll probably do it around May. Yeah. And of course, I wanted to add swimming pool to that. Talking to her, trying to get her to put it on with that. Mm -hmm. so, you know, 
that you can do it for the same price, or if if not, then you just put it on and get it all done. So, mm -hmm. so try to add that. I think she'll be all right. Here. We talked about last year that we want. We think we're looking at committing a substantial amount of money this year to road repair. Oh. Um, really, really going over stuff and doing yeah. things that you know are marginal. Um, so we may commit up to. Hundred hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for stuff. More than likely, I'm guessing uh, chip sealing everything. <laughs> you know, what I call I, chip seal. I mean, hide doesn't mean you overlay. That's right. the only one we overlay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't think about you know grinding and re overlaying anything. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it right now. Yeah. But uh, so, like, all in all, our roads are fairly well. They need some, yeah. you know, a couple of these to take care of it this year. So let's keep that in mind when we do our tour. Um, see what we can uh, see what we can decide on. Uh, a, a note about this association uh, speakers potentially. Um, a packet of information about, as you recall, last year we obtained a small portion, a small parcel behind the natural burial. Uh, ground that was the villages and a uh, long, long time ago there was an option for the cemetery to purchase that parcel from the village back then and we opted to, uh, although the option expired, we, we asked to them to honor that option, uh, which they agreed to back a while ago. <laughs> and it took a while to get that executed and a deed produced, and it, it has been done. Anyway, so we get a notice from the uh, county auditor that that parcel was part of a larger agricultural parcel that the village owned and rented out. And because they rented it out, it produced income for somebody, well, the village, yeah, and the, the renter. But, so that put it in a CAUV category, which I still don't understand. Well, yeah, I guess I kind of understand it, but uh, so anyway, the little five acres that we have, which has never had any agriculture on it, to, you know, in the history probably of mankind, um, but still it was included in that. And so, in theory, because now it's out of CAUB, there's a three-year recruit re recruitment period that that we are responsible for. The difference between the CAUV tax, let's call it a hundred dollars an acre, and what would be, uh, I'm not sure what they would, because it's not residential. So what it goes into, I'm not sure what it would be, but let's just say it would double or triple or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But so we, uh, you have to go through an application form for an exemption, uh, or not an exemption, but. An ex For the uh, for the for the recruitment of the tax or re recruitment. recruitment of the <laughs> of the tax, and so that's going to take a while. So anyway, that's the application, and then there's another application to get it into a tax exempt basis because now obviously the township phones it and it won't be used for any other purpose, and it will qualify to be tax exempt. So that has to mm -hmm. then that application has to be made to the state of Ohio through the county auditor and that would be in there also. That's a long story, sorry mm -hmm. about that. Uh, right. Back back from the from 2018 uh, for the fire department, which is all, already on our website for the general public to view and enjoy, both 17 and 18 are on there. Uh, a notice from the, the Department of Development in the county about a community block grant um, application available for us. Um, which generally that's not something that we participate in, but it's, it's not applicable, so much does. Um, a uh, uh, email note from uh, Mayor Beery of the Village of Clifton that they did hold uh, last Sunday on the 13th at uh, the, uh, the Glen Helen building, a um, meet and greet, and coffee and donuts or something that affected for residents of um, William and Mary Court, uh, who 
might potentially be affected by the potential Yellow Springs Clifton connector bike path, uh, which is roughly scheduled to come up 343 from, uh, well, it, it's got to get from the parking area in the village up to the entrance road into the Glen uh, to the, yeah, the, the back road, as it were. And there's going to be a potential staging area there. Uh, I'm not sure if that includes parking or not. I don't remember that conversation. But then it would start there and it would work its way up to uh, the edge of the Glen uh, just before Jack um, Lay's property and then turn in and go in 500 feet ish or so uh, it, it, along the fence line there. And then it would line up with a cul de sac that's at the end of William and Mary. And then they would use, so it has to have an easement across that property. And that property owner is amenable to that easement. And the other property owners apparently are uh, quite amenable, enthusiastic about the possibility of having the, uh, the bike path there. And, and obviously their potential of it being for their families to use too. So then we go from there and it would go then onto 370, down 370 to the, to the, uh, to the John Bryan State Park, through the entrance, um, road to John Bryan State Park, down to the lower level where uh, you pick up the, the road that goes back to the Orton, um, the Orton parking lot, uh, and at the very end of the Orton parking lot, there's a gate, if anybody remembers, there's a mm -hmm. gate there, <clears throat> and there's a gate, to, and there's a kind of a primitive walking path uh, at that point that meanders, and I mean meanders, uh, mm -hmm. eventually back up to uh, the, the, uh, the maintenance building. No, the little, I'm sorry, the parking little museum. Area, parking area. No, it, doesn't, it, it can hit the parking area, and that's where it's going to go, but that's through another, it, it, it V's off and yeah. there's a mountain bike, there's a real twisty mountain bike path that, mm -hmm. that then goes from where I'm thinking. Uh, up to that parking area, or it would it would potentially continue up to the that little museum right. that's up there. Right. So the anyway, museum maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the that's the rough plan, and the um, group is hoping to get a, a clean Ohio application put together before um, I think it's February first or maybe February fifth. But I'm meeting with them tomorrow, late tomorrow afternoon to. Uh, uh, see how much of that application we can get put together. Um, message from MVRPC about officer's nominations. Um, I'm, I'm an officer, so I send in my nomination to be an officer again. Um, another message from RPCC about being on the executive committee for them. And the packet from the, from the, packet from the, from the uh, meeting last night. Any other correspondence in or out? Well, I just happen to have two. Mm -hmm. well, no, That we have a we have we do not have a fire report. I'm sorry. Did you want to yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, the correspondence about March seven and eight mm -hmm. local government officials conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it's an auditor state auditors project. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do, do we usually go? Um, I went last year for the first time. Uh, I believe Margaret went also. Um, it's, it's, it's good for fiscal officers, it's minimally good for trustees. There are some things in there about records retention and uh, other stuff that I noticed. Uh, it's expensive, that's one of the problems. Um, I think it's like 150 a day or for the registration, I'm not sure. And so it's a thought, you have to think about it. Okay. Talk to Margaret, maybe, and see if she got what, how much she felt it was worth for her. So, fire department. We don't have a fire department report. We have a 
We have a, a, a memo, which is really inner office memo, and it, it includes a, um, a, um, a report that we asked the fire chief to put together about an incident uh, that a member of the public spoke to us about the last meeting, and that is there, and it has been addressed, and we will take that up at our next meeting when the fire chief is here. Um, for general information, it is a, an internal, uh, it's an internal review that was done, and it will be um, discussed in an executive session, and not in, not in an open, open forum, because it's personnel. So anyway, that's to be done next week. Um, do you have anything else for, for fire, Mark? No. Uh, well, we could just say that there were 44 EMS runs and 20 fire. True. I forgot about that little tidbit. Um, and I was glad that, although you mentioned the correspondence, I was glad to see the 2018 report. Fun facts. Yeah, just combining the whole month. The, all 12 months reports. Uh, it's not in there, but they have made uh, two or three stories into Bath Township. Um, no, no problems for any of them. Well, this is during so far this year and a new contract. No, two or three since our last meeting. Yeah. So that's, we're probably up to 10-ish for the month of January. So we're somewhat up with the average. I think they, they, they thought we average, we might average 10, 10 or so. Is there a possible tanker in the room? On Friday, we'll be receiving the, um, the, the two, I believe it's a 2,000 gallon tanker, I don't remember the age of it, that the Bath Township owns that the city of Fairborn had been storing and using as necessary. And now, because they're not dealings with Bath Township anymore. Uh, Bath Township has control of it. Again, they're storing it right now in, in Xenia uh, because of the size of it in, in, uh, in their storage facility. And the reason it didn't come over directly is because Bath Township found that they had no title to it. And so they wanted to make sure that they had clean title to it before they, uh, and uh, I'm, I must say I'm not 100% sure what the agreement is because we haven't signed a contract for anything. I mean, I do know they are not giving it to us, um, but we will have use of it. We have to space to store it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the other tanker will go. Not to the uh, shop for a while. Yeah, um, so we figure that out. But um, but we will have exclusive use of it as long as we're uh, under contract with Bath Township for for service. It's 2,300 gallons. 23? Yeah. Not sure. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to see. Did you see it out there? No, I didn't see it first. I saw a picture. It had to go be inspected or something. Mm -hmm. The company called and said, you know. Mm -hmm. But then asked me if we could store the other one. I said, sure. We put it up over the pit and move it back a little bit. Do my legs. So he didn't know. It won't fit the clip. Mm -hmm. Not letting the air out, though. Because I can put it in the pool. Yeah. It's been in there before. Couldn't be drained and set out under the. You could probably put it in the, in the, in the back salt bin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just put it where the tractor is. Mm -hmm. Move the tractor around, put it maybe I can get in inside the big building, the Quonset. Or you could maybe put the crack filler back in the Quonset hut. I could. We'll put it there where that is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, we've we'll, 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 we'll got a place for that. That's coming up. Um, new firehouse report. Uh, unfortunately, the federal government is not working, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture is not working, so we're not working. But mm -hmm. we will when it happens. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, cemetery. Uh, we had a burial last week in Clifton. Full burial on Friday. Everything went smooth. It's pretty soft. I didn't really get in now. We do too much damage. Mm -hmm. Good. And we've got one tomorrow up here. We'll open it up in the morning. It'll be at 1 o'clock when they get here. He said, he said at 10 o'clock, sir, they'd be here at 1. 
mm -hmm. out of twelve inches. But it's a full burial. It's full. That, okay, that's what I figured out. It took me a while to figure out when you were saying you were concerned where the ashes were, because I thought you were putting another set of ashes in there. No, I'm putting a full body. In, okay. And I have to find the ashes right. in there. Okay, now I understand. And the family knows this that we're going to find them and, and mm -hmm. put them all back in at the same, mm -hmm. same time. Do, the re do they recall how those are enclosed? They said it was in an urn. Oh, okay. The family said, so hopefully, the metal detector. Yeah. Fine. If it's a metal urn. Well, but I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it all. Exactly. Worst comes to worst, at least it will come out intact. Yes, that's. that's it's got to come out one way or the other, you know. And so. it's real tight, so I'm going to have to pile the dirt. But I can, where I'm digging, I can reach the dump truck. So I'm going to take the sod, and then keep the topsoil and take a little clay out of the bottom. Mm -hmm. it, so I won't have as much clay in there. But I don't. Have to mm -hmm. It's real tight. It's in such a deep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Romantic. And that's that's all I had for sitting there. Okay. You didn't happen to run across Van Lane or anybody about it. remember I asked you about mm -hmm. it? No, I didn't. I okay. Know. But I mean if you want to do that, I mean no. if he can't do it, and if you can give me a machine I can do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah if that's what comes to. Mm -hmm. Uh So we uh, took care of the issue on Glen Drive. I found the catch basin, uncovered it, and it had collapsed on the west side of the side and collapsed its full. The pipes full. It's four feet on the ground. Four feet down, it's white and gray. It's two feet. Mm -hmm. But it's packed full. It's an old steel pipe. So I just collapsed the catch basin and left the pipe and put in the pipe next to it. Mm -hmm. And then filled that whole area with tubes. So it looks like a trench drain. Mm -hmm. It's draining. Yeah. But he has an issue with sewage smell now. And I'm wondering if it's because the gravel is so saturated that it is draining. Mm -hmm. Now maybe it's pulling out of the tubes what couldn't come out before. Mm -hmm. It could be. But he's going to look at it. I can't lower it much more. He said, could you lower it? I can't I mean, come that much maybe. Mm -hmm. If it has to be, I can't do much more or it won't drain because yeah. it's warm. Yeah. But as right now it's draining. Wait and see what he says. Mm -hmm. What do you find out? I'm not going back to put some cool patch on it, but not really. <coughs> yeah. so, I don't think it's a big issue, but wouldn't anything we can We made a drain now, so that could be pretty mm -hmm. wet down there. Yeah. So we call the swamp? <laughs> That's definitely <laughs> what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I've been I'm fighting on the, on the snow, the snow on the roads. We've had a little bit. Miserable the other night. Uh, you had any trouble other than drivers out, other drivers out there? Oh, you know, two o'clock in the morning, Tom's uh, people out driving around. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, like here comes a car. <laughs> but, you know, we're used to that. Uh, we talked about the signs. I told you I was going to take Friday out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And bring a little cover for us in case there's something comes up. That's about all I had. Okay. Anything for um, road administrator Bill Uh I didn't catch who will cover. Brandon. Okay. He did pretty good the other day. Did all right. You want to explain to the board who's uh, Brandon's our part time builder. What? No, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. But who's warming the passenger seat up today, tomorrow? Oh, it'll be my nephew. He's shadowing me at work. Mm -hmm. It's part of his. Career center thing, they have to shadow. He shadowed me today and tomorrow. He's going to help me better than usual. Uh, and well, like I said, I got a letter, I just have to write what we got on the side. Alright, see we're mm -hmm. helping educate the youth here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like he catches on pretty quick for so some things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a quick study. Mm -hmm. Okay, that it? I believe so. All right. Uh, Fiscal officer, we have a resolution before us, and 
since this cluster is not here, I believe I will then read it. We have resolution 2019-5, amendment of temporary appropriations, whereas, got the, whereas it's ongoing process to determine appropriations for fiscal year 2019 and whereas it's required to submit all appropriation changes made to the 2019 budget to the county officer. Now, therefore, a trustee is authorized the following change to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor. Fire fund, this is the only one, uh, training services increased by $1,320. Is there a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2019-05? I so move. I'll second. Okay, motion is moved and second. Uh, any further discussion regarding uh, Resolution 2019-05. Hearing none, may we vote please. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. And I will vote yes also. So, it's official. Um, for your information, and I don't, I don't know where it went, I took the liberty of reviewing the temporary appropriations for 2019, all the, all the line items in it, and um, made suggested revisions to the whole appropriations and gave it to Margaret and in general what she used to do is she will compare what I suggested and what she might be thinking about and either make them or modify them and then and then she'll uh, reprint uh, a potential to a permanent set for adoption at some meeting, obviously before our April meeting, there was a deadline. So I'm guessing it's somewhere in the works, but I haven't seen. It. So anyway, hopefully we'll get that relatively soon. Okay, moving right along, we have no uh, uh, zoning for the evening. Uh, we do have standing committee reports uh, tonight. Let's see, uh, my two, and she still hasn't put the TVC in there. Um, Board of Direct the, the Executive Committee of MBRPC and the Board of Directors did not meet in January. They will meet uh, in February. And the one that's supposed to be in there, the MBRPC TAC uh, Committee. It did meet, and <coughs> I did not attend. I see. Okay. Um, uh, Regional Planning Coordinate Coordinating Commission meeting uh, was held last night. There was a subdivision review. Um, Oh, it's also an excellent for your information. If you want to sometime check it out, if you didn't already dig through here, there's an annual report. There is an annual report. Come oh, on, I don't think I'll have that. Well, there was an annual report, and I'll find it again. But it's, it was very well done. Sorry. You keep talking, maybe might, I can find it. Still be in there. Mm. Um, it was very well done. It's the first one of its kind, and, and uh, we were all very pleased about it. So that was on there. And there was some financial about 2018-19, um, but financially they're in pretty good shape. Uh, they ended the year up $2,000 uh, in the black. Let's see, what else we got here? Um, any, Anything going on at the Senior Center, Mark? Um, only the, um, the group that's concerned with the Senior Housing Project. And uh, they had the uh, council meeting last night. Mm -hmm. Did you hear how? Uh, how that went? Yeah, I, I, uh, or did I you went, go? Oh. yeah, and, uh, right. and it went, went fine. Mm -hmm. So those various concerns that they brought up the first time were either addressed or? They were addressed and, uh, as the, I don't know how the council works in terms of approval, but they, they all voted in favor of the project. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was the second reading? Mm -hmm. That was the second reading. Is that all there is, or is there more readings for that? 
I think that that's all there is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and part of the uh, concern was that it seemed to be driven by the deadline for the application that Home Inc. was making. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seemed to be the primary concern. Mm -hmm. You mean that they're going too fat? Mm -hmm. sort of yeah. That they were going too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think that everybody understands the concept of government time. You hurry up and wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, any, uh, where are we here? Anything for Clifton Cemetery? No. They're all happy out there? <laughs> Until spring. <laughs> um, there was the message about the Economic Sustainability Committee retreat, which I don't know about, but are you, are you uh, up to date on that? I've got, uh, I had a copy made because I was concerned about the, the date, and I will call. Hmm. Is it a conflict, you mean? Or? Are you just not hundred percent sure about the date? I wasn't a hundred percent sure about the date. I'll call some. Um, and let's see. Last but not least, uh, Bill seems to be fine. I was in there a little while ago. It may potentially need to have its. Roof painted and some of the exterior painted this year. We'll look at that a little more closely when the weather turns better. Is there a, still a, a standard open <coughs> public visitation? Uh, it is uh, not standard. Uh, it is still potentially uh, Sunday afternoons. I know sometimes it happens and sometimes not so happens, but try. It's so if somebody know. wanted to go, they should call? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is definitely open uh, by appointment. I've never heard anyone been refused to, to go through it. Yeah, they'll make arrangements for somebody to take them through. I, I'm always willing to do it. Nobody's called me in a while, but I happy to do it. <coughs> okay. Any uh, new business? I guess the only new business is we are officially, I did check, we are officially in the, the new um, um, titles. So we are not president and vice president now. We are chairman and, or we are chair and vice chair. And it's going to only take a bazillion years to get used to that. <laughs> So, uh, the website is uh, still being reconstructed. Um, it is up and running in its current form, but uh, it is going to have some changes before it's uh, finalized. And I don't have a date for that, but I look forward to the final product. Um, I will circulate the, the development site to everyone, you know, before it's finalized, all those you can always go back in and you know, redo it. But um, if, if you had any changes you want to make, um, and the you know, Otaro, that's it. So, any old oh, oh, women, here's a old business hmm. conversations of the meeting schedule. Well, there we go. Um, would you like to? Uh, Speak to that, Mr. Hollister. Well, the last meeting, I urged us to consider uh, look for a time that we aren't conflicting with both Clifton Village Council and Yellow Springs Village Council. Mm -hmm. um, and, and here we are meeting on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. 
but we have uh, at our last meeting said we'd keep talking about it, but for the time being, it would continue to be Monday at 7, the first and third Monday of each month. And I'd like us to continue to consider Wednesdays, although there could be other, other times considered. And Chris, you said that you asked uh, Chief Altman and Margaret to submit their preferences or recommendations. Well, I did ask Chief, and I didn't get it. Um, I didn't ask Margaret because I didn't know she was going to be here tonight mm -hmm. until uh, just quite a bit later this afternoon or middle afternoon. So I don't know her preference. Um, I would say of, of the, and Daniel we have talked to, I would say of the, of the group, Margaret and Colin might be the two who would be conflicted more with, 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 with Wednesday or with any particular any time. change. Yeah, any change. Not, not that they could do any change, but we'd have to maybe work around them mm -hmm. a little more than, I mean, we seem to have some flexibility um, among us. Right, Mark? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we'll just have to get with them at the next meeting that they attend. <laughs> You say there is an advantage? Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Any other business before the board? Well, we didn't exactly do Dale Reed's record six minute <laughs> meeting. Or Lamar's mm -hmm. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Is that what it was? <laughs> I thought it was 20, but uh, maybe it's probably it's much shorter. Uh, but having no other business before us, and then obtain a motion to adjourn. I would make that motion. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second, and we are adjourned. We can get in the book. It's somewhere around here. We'll find it. Uh, did you sign all those checks, Mark? <laughs>